So, you hate your job. You don't make enough money. And you're wondering, why does that person have a better job? Makes more money. Why is my career not progressing? Let me share 10 advice to set you in the right direction in career. And more importantly, in life. Life isn't fair. Get used to it. We didn't have the same starting point. I wasn't born in a Target hospital. Went to a Target kindergarten. Ran a bulge bracket lemonade stand. And then attended the right boarding school that gave me a clear shot to Target colleges. But I'm generally a happy person because I accepted where I came from early enough in my life. Stop complaining and stop the envy. You won't change anything external. The only thing you can do is to make the most out of what you have. Same goes with the professional world. Not the most qualified person gets the job. Some have an insider track. Some got interviewed because the HR was in a good mood that day. Some just sell themselves better. Sometimes someone more experienced is just willing to work for less pay, especially in an environment like this. When I worked in equity research, I know other teams MD got text messages from clients who asked to place their kids for equity research internships. Why their kids can't do anything better than equity research, I don't know. But the insider track is real. There's nothing us commoners can do about it. Gordon Gecko might be a fake character, but the original Wall Street movie is such a classic because quotes like Wake up, will ya pal? If you're not inside, you are outside, okay? It's just too damn real. If you're still complaining about unfair life, stop right now. Work with what you have and control what you can control, which is to learn more skills and how to better pitch yourself. That leads to my next point. If you want to accomplish something in life, you got to put in the work. That's the secret sauce you don't want to hear about. But it doesn't stop being true. The shortcut you're looking for doesn't exist. Successful people make things look really easy because they have mastered their field of expertise. Media likes to portray wealth as an event, when in reality it's a journey. In the background, it's decades of compounded effort that you don't want to hear about. Do Michael Phelps, Katie Ledecky, Kobe Bryant, Serena Williams, and other star athletes have innate talents? Yes, but at the same time, I will bet they are the hardest working motherfuckers in their discipline. The case for Usain Bolt is particularly deceptive. Every four years, you get to see his work results for like 10 seconds. But think about the work that goes into becoming the world's fastest man where a tenth of a second difference could derail you from the podium. It is 100% your choice of having fun or suffering through pain. You just have to be okay with the consequence of your decisions. You can also choose to suffer now or later. I get tons of questions on the best book on investing, the best course on modeling. If you're truly resourceful enough, you could find all the knowledge you need for free on the internet somewhere and piece the knowledge together and master them. And I also get way too many, yo, I want to work at a hedge fund, man, type of comments. My first check is to look through their social media to see what you're doing over the weekend. Look, I'm not saying you aren't allowed to have fun. But if every Friday night and every weekend, your social media just shows highlights of you going to parties, concerts, watching TV shows, forget investing. Your chance of achieving success in any discipline is zero. Again, as long as you're okay with the outcome as a result of your actions, that's perfectly fine. Just don't complain about why you aren't getting a better job, why you aren't getting into your dream profession. There's no free lunch here. There's no free lunch anywhere. I had bad grades in college, so I'm always grateful for opportunities and I have good attitude that no task is beneath me. But I hear enough stories about candidates acting entitled during interviews about not wanting to do certain tasks. Look, at the start of your career, 99% of you add zero strategic value. It's not your fault, you're just brand new. You're paid to learn. What you need to bring are good attitude and work ethic. These things are intangible, but I can guarantee the ones with those qualities are getting ahead in their career. At first, the tasks you do at work might not be the most intellectually stimulating things. But in exchange, you learn about the big picture stuff through osmosis. Over time, you should see the bigger picture, the more strategic stuff, which hopefully interests you more. If you're not interested in anything, you have a much bigger problem. Your job is to take as much things off your manager's plate so he or she can focus on taking things off their manager's plates. 
so that everybody grows. In the corporate world, most get promoted when they are already functioning at the next level. If you can handle most of the work that your manager can do, the company knows you are ready for the next level of challenges. And by definition, these things are what your manager might not want to do. But you do develop good fundamental technical skills that are transferable across different industries. Which leads to my next point. My first manager gave me invaluable advice of learning one Excel trick every day. I took that advice to heart and ran into issues of underbilling my clients because I was so efficient at getting the analysis done. My manager noticed the good problems I was facing at work and gave me more talking roles at client meetings. As a result, I was progressing on the job more quickly than my colleagues who were hired at the same time. The thing with low value technical work is, the sooner you can get them done efficiently and correctly, the sooner you can focus on the bigger picture stuff of how your work fits into a larger deliverable and how senior people use it to make real business decisions. That piece of advice is true for whatever profession you work in. Junior programmers code, Junior bankers format slides and do financial modeling. Junior consultants make slides and do spreadsheets. Junior research analysts dig into stock ideas given by their portfolio managers to form a view. Get the basics down ASAP so you have more time to take a step back and think about why you're doing these analysis and what it means for the company. There are many resources on how to get good at coding, Excel tricks, and so on. Find them, consume them, and apply them every day on a job. It compounds. The sooner you get strategic, the sooner you will be given tasks that are probably more enjoyable and financially lucrative for you. My first corporate job was an actuarial intern in advanced research at a major insurance firm. That summer, my department was exploring the launch of a food truck insurance. I was tasked to do the statistical analysis that ultimately goes into whether the product can add a big profit pool for the company without taking on too much risk. I analyzed tons of insurance claim data, read white papers on statistical theories, and iterated different combination of variables that gave me a reasonably predictive model. I was tasked to make a few slides in the upcoming presentation to the commercial line CFO. I was way more naive back then, so I made about 20 slides, going into all these unnecessary details, T-stat, F-stat, significance level. Sorry about all the statistics class flashback for you guys. In my final week of internship, my team and I walk into the CFO's office. The CFO said, okay, you guys got 10 minutes. Just point me to the slides that tells me how much profit is this product going to generate for the firm. Thankfully, it wasn't my manager's first rodeo, and he had the answer on page two. The CFO zoomed into the profit number, and it's too small. He decided against the product launch and ended the meeting. Needless to say, he definitely did not look at the 20 slides that have all the equations I was proud of. I was a little bummed out about that. But here's the thing. That's why the CFO makes the big decisions and the big bucks. As an investor today, of course, I understand. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is whether we can create more shareholder value. Otherwise, all the detailed work just don't matter. Even after more than 10 years of working professionally, I still tell this story because I was so grateful that I got this big eureka moment so early on in my career. Regardless of where you are in your career or what profession you are in, when you do your next task, ask yourself, why am I doing these things? How does my work fit into a bigger work stream? How does that impact the company? Because as you progress professionally, you will probably do less technical work and focus more on the big picture and make decisions. You should start training yourself to ask these questions and think big picture today. The sooner you do that, the better and faster it is for your career progression. I understand salary is tangible, predictable, and it is in the present. And especially as a college grad, you need to pay rent. You want to have fun. I get it. But let me tell you, rich and high earning people don't care about base pay because they know the real action is at linking their compensation to their value creation. What does that mean for you? Instead of compensation, especially early on, you need to relentlessly focus on becoming a more valuable individual every day. Find a place where you have a good boss, good firm, and can learn a lot. 
don't quibble over twenty thousand dollar annual salary difference between two offers. Really, in the long run, say you work till in your sixties, you have forty plus years of professional life, and most of your peak earning power is not in the first few years. Twenty thousand dollar really doesn't matter all that much in the grand scheme of things. But the intangible of having learning opportunities and good mentors early on are super crucial because that's when you are building your career foundation. Never stop learning new skills, taking on more responsibilities, and understanding your industry more deeply. Just because maybe your job now is not what you exactly want to do, doesn't mean you cannot control what you want to learn in your own time. You know the information is out there because you're watching this video. The big problem with most, if not all, of the professional exams is they're broad but shallow and lack applicability. CFA is like that in my view. Actuarial exams have almost zero applicability to the work itself, and too many of you are preparing by taking practice exam instead of learning the material. I get it. Your goal is to pass the exam and get the badge, but you don't learn anything that way. Instead, I favor free-form learning over structured learning any day. A lot of CEOs don't have anything other than a college degree. Some billionaire didn't even go to college. Well, Bill Gates and Zuckerberg are just insanely smart, and Buffett, I argue, didn't need to go to school either. That said, you should get a college degree because it still opens too many doors you cannot afford not to have access to. Theories and formulas don't explain the real world. My two rules: learn from practitioners and learn by practicing. We're talking about practice, man. The world will never know your intrinsic ability if you cannot communicate them. Work on your communication skills. Read a lot. Write consistently. Practice public speaking, and learn to be a good listener. Billionaires read a lot. Why shouldn't you read broadly? You never know which mental model from an unrelated discipline can help you understand a new situation or come up with a new idea. Be open to learning about a new subject. Anthropology, philosophy, business and people biography, science, etc. That said, it doesn't have to be explicitly reading. Of course, you can consume podcasts or educational YouTube. So many free contents out there. You just need to pay with your time. Next time, when you want to watch a TV show or play video games, I will think about reallocating some of that time to things that make you more valuable as a communicator. I read mostly nonfictions. But I wouldn't undervalue the power of fictions. Storytelling is a useful skill for interviews. And what do you think being a content creator is all about? Storytelling. And when you read, focus on comprehension instead of trying to hit certain numbers of book read each year, and apply that learning. You should start a blog. If you are worried about what other people think of your blog, I can tell you from my personal experience, people care about themselves too much to care about what you got going on. Just start. Being a better writer has to be good for your career. Seriously, I have to assume I'm not the only one who looks at these word vomit and be like, "WTF?" and "SMDH." Executives have to make tons of decisions each day. You need to keep your communication short. It will make you stand out, and your manager for sure will like you more. There's always a way to say the same thing with less words. And you will see the reading and writing translating into you being a better public speaker as well. If something you wrote about today can benefit one potential audience, you should put it out there. Since I also recommend you to read a lot, you can share your learnings from books with your audience. One, teaching is the best way for learning because you are forced to be intellectually honest and really condensed to the essence. You really need to be concise to get your audience attention. Two, you add a value by saving other people's time. That gets you followers. And finally. Book reviews is a evergreen content theme. As long as you read more books, see how it becomes a virtuous cycle. And be a good listener. Talk less and listen more in your next one-on-one -on -one conversation. Let others finish. And when it's your turn to talk, don't just start talking about yourself. You should respond and comment on what the other person said. And when you're so busy talking or thinking about what to blab about next. When others are talking, you gotta miss out on knowledge. I think all of us have room to improve in this area, and obviously can benefit your personal relationship too. The cliche is true: be patient, enjoy the process. It takes time to master something, and that's only if you discover your passion. So you have a deep desire to master it. The only lever you can pull, I can think of, is you can put in more time than others, but That obviously takes 
some fun time away. You have to ask yourself, how hard and quickly do you want it? I don't advocate for a complete lack of fun in life. That would not be a life worth living. And keep in mind, a lot of things in life don't necessarily progress linearly. Social media is non-linear. Actors reach fame only after breakout roles. Some things can grow exponentially. Some things can get stagnant for a period of time. When you're in that valley of disappointment, it can feel like you're not making progress. But I'm sure if you ask success people and they will tell you when they zoom out over their entire journey they realize everything they put in contributed to where they are today when I was actively networking for buy side jobs I forgot how many portfolio managers I talked to I got rejected many times some right before the case round some even after the case round it sucks and my mentor who is a PM put my resume down with a few startup funds. I got reached out by one and one behavioral and two technical rounds later, I was hired and I moved back to California. You know what they say, you only need one job. And were all the rejections completely useless? No, I got better at telling my story, anticipating interview questions, defending my stock pitches. They didn't achieve my final goal, but in reality, they were part of my progress toward my goal of breaking into investment management. I heard this saying, 95% of the people on this planet work for the 5% who didn't quit. There are a lot of nuances to it, but the intention of the message is good. Too many people gave up before getting into that critical mass. Things take time, stay patient, and that leads to a related point. The beginning is always the hottest because you're starting from zero. It's hard to get your first entry-level corporate job because you have no corporate experience and strategic value add. It's hard to know what to focus on for your first stock analysis because investing is a very interdisciplinary profession where you have to draw on a diverse array of knowledge in financial analysis, modeling, valuation, competitive analysis. And it takes time to connect these somewhat unrelated discipline into a cohesive toolbox that becomes a repeatable process for you as an investor. And it's definitely very difficult to get your first customer as a startup. Even the first adopters are looking for that reference customer. But it's hard to get a first customer without having a first customer. Having gotten my first corporate job, having analyzed many companies, having started my own business, I have good news for you. It does get easier after the beginning. So you do have something to look forward to. You just have to keep on and not give up. I've heard this motivational quote. The first million is hard, but the second million is inevitable. It's kind of the same idea. To get my first corporate job, I networked aggressively because no one chose me for on-campus interview because of my bad grades. I reached out to anyone who was willing to speak with me on LinkedIn. Life is so random sometimes. I reached out to this one alum who is a math major who worked at this insurance firm. I genuinely only wanted to learn about what he does, but he told me his team was hiring a summer intern and asked me if I was interested. Of course I said yes. And a few rounds of interview later, I got my actuarial internship, which led to that big eureka moment I shared with you earlier in this video. Once I had my internship on my resume and having passed two actuarial exams, I was getting more interviews for the full-time openings. My journey to investing kind of has the same narrative. An ex-colleague introduced me to the concept of stock research. At the time, I did not know accounting, business strategy, anything. I was a quant and actuary. I did not know where to start and what to look for in analyzing and valuing a business. Just like a lot of beginners, I hit the classic books. Ben Graham, Buffett Munger, Seth Klarman, Joe Greenblatt, Phil Fisher, you name it. They were helpful. I was making small progresses here and there, but I still was constantly operating out of my comfort zone. Nevertheless, I kept on going, knowing I cannot get dumber for reading one more book. So I went out to look for every literature I can find on investing and businesses. I cannot explain it really. But you know in life you get those smoke suddenly clear moments? No, 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 I'm not talking about running out of weed. I mean big eureka moments that are big intellectual breakthroughs. And the less clueless I got, the more passionate I became in investing. And I went even harder on self-learning and looking at more companies. And here we are today. For those who are new to my channel, I started a business last year around this time. It's a similar story that it was very tough in the beginning. All the clients signed up for the free introduction calls, but I could not convert any of them to a paying client. I knew I can control what I can control, which is to keep giving value and collecting customer reviews on the free sessions. Over time, I started to get first adopters because 
more of my contents are out there and the prospects are getting a better picture of what problems I can solve for them. I hope these examples are telling you, you need to keep going, keep working on yourself and keep networking. As a YouTuber today, I watch a lot of big YouTube channels. One of the recurring themes I get from big YouTubers is you gotta keep going. The guys I think media are saying, you gotta see this through, be consistent and just keep putting out contents. And that's what I'm promising to you guys. That's the only thing I can control. And for you, you only need one job. Someone will give you a chance. And while you're waiting for that someone, you are getting better and better as an intrinsic talent. The world has rules. The ones who follow them progress more quickly. That said, rule followers are not guaranteed success, but the ones who just don't get it are guaranteed to struggle without ever knowing why they're not getting ahead in life. For now, I will just rattle off the common senses that you need to know. For example, when you interview, formal or informational, be on time, don't swear, turn off your phone, don't multitask, don't wear black suits, don't speak ill of your former companies and bosses, do your homework and don't ask first level questions. Don't ask about pay unless they bring it up first. Always send a thank you email. I've seen way too many smart people trip up on these common sense things. Early on in my career, I interviewed at many subpar companies. I remember interviewing at this data technology firm. Each candidate had to present in front of the interviewers and the other candidates about why they want to work there. One candidate actually said, I want to work here because of great perks and benefits. I was definitely shaking my head on the inside. These are very low level mistakes that none of you should make. Seriously, colleges need to stop forcing you to take advanced calculus when most of you are gonna do adding and subtracting numbers at work at most. Instead, they should provide a course called Common Sense in the Professional World. Forget about getting into high caliber profession like investment banking. Just progressing within a normal corporate job is going to be a challenge for you if you don't get your basics down. If you don't have the perfect resume or the connection, level the playing field by going direct. No one will hand you that high caliber job on a silver platter. You need to get into the mindset that no one is above cold emailing. Put yourself out there. People want to help you, provided that you have your etiquettes down and you have a clear ask. When I was in sales at research, a person in commercial banking emailed me for coffee. He was very clear about his goal, understood what sales at research is all about, and attached a stock write-up. I did not hesitate to meet him for a coffee and hopefully save some time in his journey. Today he works on a buy side after his sting in sell side equity research. If you are hungry and can demonstrate your skills, you can go very far in life because the target school folks are too entitled. They don't do a lot of direct reach outs since firm come to them. The rest of your non-target comrades, they don't have their etiquette down yet or don't make an effort to figure out the game. That's your edge. When you job hunt, HR should be the last set of people you talk to and the best job leads are the ones where you are the sole candidate. Even when you have a job, you should network for many purposes. You can find mentors who can shorten your path or help you avoid detours. Your mentor can be an internal colleague or an accomplished professional outside your firm or your profession. You also need sponsors inside your company for career progression. Remember this, the most important decisions on your career are made when you are not in the room. You need a sponsor in that room to make sure your accomplishments and potential are recognized. Sponsors vouch for you for your promotion. Knowing whom to call within the company when you don't know something can save so much time. When I work at a Fortune 100 insurance company, I was really amazed by my manager's network. One time I was struggling to figure out where the numbers came from in a spreadsheet we got from another department. I was stuck for hours and my manager called me into his office, put on the speakerphone and called one of his his contacts in that department. The smoke immediately cleared and I rushed back to my desk to put a comment on that cell in the spreadsheet so I remember how the other department got those numbers. You can brute force your way into completing a task or you can be that social butterfly and build a network of contacts who can provide you with crucial intel when you're stuck on a task. Which of those two people do you think have a better work-life balance and job satisfaction? So really, learn to network. That leads to my next point on how to sell. Every company needs sales and marketing, especially as a startup. Marketing is crucial for revenue generation. Forget profits, I'm talking about revenue. 
Learn how to pitch yourself. There are great books on the subject. My recommendations are in the video description down below. I found them to be very helpful when I started my business. When you interview, you're obviously selling. When you're getting promoted, it's not just what your accomplishments and knowledge that matter. It's what senior people's perception of you gets you promoted. Creating that perception is selling. Every role at a senior level is selling. Investment bankers, consultants, lawyers, and portfolio managers are all selling their services. CEO is selling their vision to employees and investors. If you claim you want to get to the very top, work on that skill today. Every day when you're working on things for your manager, you're implicitly selling as well. Junior people trade technical skills for money. Senior people trade relationship, vision, and experience for money. Who gets paid more money? I hope you see how important selling and building relationships are. That leads to a related point on brand building. Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan, said it really well in one of my favorite graduation speeches. There is already a book on you. That book has already been written. And if I spoke to your teachers, your friends, your professionals, your parents, uh, I would know whether you're trusted, how hard you work, whether you're ethical. I would know so much about you, you'd be shocked. I don't even have to meet you. People can easily validate by channel checking you. It's like doing expert network calls for stock research. If one person says something about a company, it could be an outlier in a biased opinion. But if five people say the same thing about you, it's a credible insight. So be consistent about who you are. Because if you aren't, people can call you a bluff. And that cannot be good for your career. Every industry becomes incredibly small the more senior you get. Tech, fp &A people know each other. All the data scientists go to the same conferences. In my first job, I just see people move around the three companies within the industry for a higher title and more pay. And these companies are competing for the same sets of clients, so they all know each other. Eventually, they settle in one of the firms as a senior person, or they leave to join a client. And it's safe to assume they got the job by getting a phone call from a senior person at a competitor, not through HR screening. Just be aware the moment you're stepping into the corporate world, you are already building your brand. I'm sure you noticed this. Too many college students started as pre-med, pre-law, or pre-business school just to end up graduating with some random major. Too many MBA students recruit for investment banking and management consulting only because their peers are. If you don't work hard to figure out what you really want in life, I am not going to be the one who suffers. You are. I understand when you're in school, you're kind of trapped in a bubble like your school is its own world. But you need to think independently about what you want instead of going with the crowd. Some of your peers really want to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an investment banker. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. Just know medical schools, law schools, and companies are very good at separating the truly passionate from the herders. And you cannot win against the passionate and the determined candidates who have the self-discipline to stand out. All you will get are rejections. Same thing with work. When you join a company, just because something has always been done that way doesn't mean one, it's the right way. Two, that there aren't better ways to do it. The real problem solvers challenge conventional wisdom to create transformative outcomes. Those people go on to be senior executives because they ask the right questions. They take actions. They take risk by being different. For the really courageous ones, they go on their own to solve a problem in their differentiated way. It's nuanced how much you can voice your own opinion, but you need to start develop that independent thinking. Have you heard yourself saying, oh, I really want to start this or that? I was catching up with a friend over Zoom and I told him about my YouTube experience. He said, you know, I always wanted to have a YouTube channel teaching others about value investing. I'm sure he has had the idea for many years. He is a much more experienced investor than I am. The problem is, as of now, he hasn't activated his YouTube account. There is zero video and there is zero follower. If this time three years ago, I didn't just sign up for an account on Instagram, there wouldn't be Dick the Southsider. I definitely hesitated at the time because other than memes, I feel I didn't have other idea buckets that can fill an entire week of content. But I started. I figured out as I go and I'm still figuring it out. If you want to do something, take action. Perfectionism is your big enemy. I am confident every entrepreneur agreed with me. If you're a startup, you need to get a minimum viable product out there. If you're a YouTuber, you need to post videos. If you're a stock investor, you actually need to act 
on your idea to monetize. No one ever got rich by having great stock ideas but never bought them or shorted them. The goal is to get data back so you can tweak and pivot if necessary. I don't know whether you will like this video, but the data will tell me. Sometimes I thought my post is really funny, but it's really low engagement on Instagram after I posted it. Other times I thought it's just okay content, but it became a top 10 engagement post of the year for me. It's never what I think that matters. It's what you as the audience likes that matters. So you need to create a skin in the game by starting today. Your first stock analysis is gonna suck. Your first blog article is gonna suck. Your first YouTube video is going to suck. But what sucks more? Never trying and not taking action. If Jeff Bezos only wondered about selling books online, well today he sells whatever the heck he wants. We wouldn't have Amazon. If Elon Musk only wondered about electric car or space exploration, we wouldn't have Tesla and SpaceX. There are some of the richest people in the world because not only they wondered, they executed their ideas. They dealt with all the operational and financial challenges and got to where they are today. The folks living in Portola Valley, Atherton, and Hillsboro, they're smart, no doubt. But a lot of smart people cannot afford a house there because they didn't take the business and financial risk to execute on their vision and turn their visions into products and market them. Life is short. Your obligations change. Tomorrow is not a strategy. Start today. Robert Cialdini shared research that shows we human beings automatically assign positive traits to good-looking people. Sadly, most of us don't look like George Clooney or Miranda Kerr. Control what you can control. For example, we can control how we dress. Dressing well doesn't mean buying expensive clothing. There are simpler things you can do. Starting off with clothes that fit well. I can guarantee you stand out just by having a good fit. In most parts of the corporate world, especially in a profession that's still more conservative in dress code, a well-dressed junior person can still stand out in a good way. I've worked at banks and insurance firms. Both have pretty conservative dress code in the corporate standard. So the C-suite management still wears suits. Imagine a quarterly town hall or a social event that the CFO or the CEO attends. If you're that junior person that dresses well, it makes you memorable. You never know when the CFO knowing who you are can pay dividend in your career when it comes to a promotion or being spared in a layoff. The definition of well-dressed differs across industry. So dress well to the extent that you still fit in. You don't need to go monk strap in a three-piece suit if you work at a tech startup. That's my point. And of course, dressing well is another one of those things that will obviously benefit your personal life just like what I said about being a good listener in a video two weeks ago. Do you want an easy trick to be happier in life? Stop comparing. Social media is selective disclosure. You see your peers' best moments in life on social media. But a lot of things are not what it seems. Your friend might be traveling all year around but have no savings. Focus on comparing to yourself a year ago. Did you grow as an individual? If not, you know you're the problem. If you did, keep it up. That should give you joy. Life isn't fair, like I said before. People have different innate talent, family resources that can fast track their progress, or they found their passion earlier so they started earlier. Those 30 under 30s, a lot of them have rich parents. Some of them straight up have questionable ethics as we learn now. Maybe if you have access to daddy and mommy venture capital management, you can scale a D2C shitco faster than they did. And yes, luck plays a role too, but by definition, no one can control luck. I can tell you from my personal experience, the harder I work, the luckier I got. I continue to believe hard work plays a big role and that's something that is within our control. We have a limited lifespan. You can make more money, but we cannot make more time. You must be judicious of time. Of course, it's easier said than done when we don't control 100% of our time. But you can control your own action. Think about your long-term goal. How do the things you plan to do in your free time help you achieve your goal? You need to have self-discipline. Next time when you come home from work and just want to Netflix and chill, think about what you can do with that time instead to make yourself a more valuable individual so that you get promoted more quickly 
or enter a higher paying industry or building that side hustle or your own business. For example, I have a rule about reading. If five minutes into it, I feel this reading is not going to make me smarter. I'm moving on. You don't have to finish every book. You should actually read the good ones multiple times because every time you learn something new. I'm totally happy to have read only 10 books every year that are totally transformative. The number of books read doesn't impress people. When you start talking, I can tell whether you're well read or you cannot keep up with the conversation. It ultimately comes down to what you took away from your reading. You don't need to be generous with your time to everyone. Anyone who wants an informational interview with you needs to earn it by having a strong code email. So it shows they respect your time and have done some basic level homework. We're not asking for much. We're just worried that you might waste our time because we're not getting that time back. Don't be loyal to your company. When you just graduated college, you might want to work for a specific firm for all sorts of right or wrong reasons. But over time, you will learn that most firms have issues. Small firms are disorganized and have no process. Big firms are bureaucratic and political. No place is perfect. So it really comes down to whether you can find a manager and a team that can create a good culture for you and mentor you. If you are naive enough to believe any company treats you like family, this wave of layoffs should remind you they don't. No employee is a must keep. It's just capitalism. Not that people are evil or anything. But it grosses me out when they message these things and spend company money to create an illusion that we're a family. The only person who can say we're a family is this guy because he has backed up his words in 10 movies and counting. Take care of yourself first, then take care of whom you want to take care of. Unless you're 100% or a significant owner of something, remember you're always just a number in the spreadsheet, even if you bring revenue for the company. Everyone is replaceable. You've seen press releases about CEO pursuing other opportunities outside the company. You see my point? They're replaceable too. If you want to hear more of my take on the investment management industry, I have two great videos for you in the upcoming screen.